the viewer game analysis is going to be done, but then, you know, some of you guys have been sending some stuff in, so let's have some more fun with this. And I definitely want this to be an ongoing series from now on. So if you play a great game, especially if it's a tournament game, uh, we've got a tournament game coming up that I'm very excited to analyze. Please send them in to me because I'm having fun with this stuff. Okay, without further ado, we have a game. It was a three-minute blitz game off of Lee Chess between two players that are very close to 2150 in the blitz rating category. And let me go ahead and flip it because... Our chosen player, I, I mean, I had a video the other day where I recorded from the wrong perspective. Sorry. I do try to give objective analysis when going through these. I'm sorry if I, I lean one way or the other. Uh, I am a bit human. But in this case, we have E4, E6. And of course, my first big success as an author came with my book, Master the French Defense, with Grandmaster Linderman. And... I'm, I'm always going to lean towards the French side of things. I'm sorry, but uh, I got to gotta say, and you'll hear it here first, folks, that I've got a planned expansion for this position. I've actually already done the analysis. I just need to do the video recordings for Chessable and no telling when it will get released because video takes forever to get produced these days because... We're putting out books at quite a clip at Chessable. You know what I'm saying? So, I've got the burn variation. And honestly, I feel that this is the way to go if you're a modern French defense player, which is why I'm adding in a full chapter on this, that this particular variation, I mean, the engine likes it, I like it, Nepo likes it. I mean, that's all that matters, right? So, let's go ahead and give some love to the burn variation, and I'll, I'll show you why. In our main game, we got bishop e7, and there are two dangerous variations here. The first being h4 with the Alakine Chateau Gambit, and I'm like, yes. This is normally what I teach my students to play when they have white in this position, and it's dirty. Uh, I think I may already have some games on the channel with it from my students, but I'm just saying. And then the other is just the mainline classical with capturing. Because to me, on a fundamental level, I, I don't like the variations in the French where I have traded off my good B for white's bad B. And how am I defining good B versus bad B? It's the locked pawn structure. Now, this is the good bishop because it agrees with the central pawn. This is the bad bishop because it is stuck behind the center pawns. Very easy concept to understand. Most of the French defense is, I need to get my bad B working. What we're gonna see in this game is, Black traded off his good B early, normal line in the classical, but did not get sufficient counterplay, and he got rolled on the king side. We're gonna take a look at a few key moments where Black could have defended better, but overall, this is a one-sided game by White, where white just kind of pushes black off the board. So let's get to it. F4, we're staying with theory here. C5, and then the main move here is D takes C5, and Bishop D3 was the move played by our viewer. And I like this move, it's very practical, because here, if black doesn't play accurately, he's already deeply in the hole. And it's back to that concept of you trade it off, you're good B. Your bad B sucks. What are your pieces doing? This just isn't looking happy for black, let's be honest. So very critical here, and we're following a game from 2007 between two GMs. Black must play C takes D4, gives a tickle to the knight, knight E2, and then queen B4 check, where queen D2 was played in the game and black played queen takes B2. That may be a little bit more speculative, but, I mean, you could trade queens, and there's never going to be a big attack, and you have an equal game. This is judged as dynamic equality by the engine. This is my recommendation for how to go in the position. I mean, black played knight c6, and already the engine's starting to favor white by, you know, 
uh, a sizable margin, more than your first piece edge. So I feel like C takes D4 need to be played at that moment. Castles, CD, Knight E2, and White's literally gotten everything he wanted out of the opening. It may look like, ooh, a pawn, but legitimately, it's, it's these types of situations where if Black plays something like Knight B4 and captures just to get rid of the B, well, we end up in a good knight versus bad bishop scenario because a knight's going to sit on d4 forever. If this knight ever trades for one of the other knights, how is that bishop ever going to get in the game? And that's a classical positional way to just smash the French defense. If black makes improper trades from this structure, you're lost positionally. If he doesn't figure out an active counterattacking plan, you could be lost tactically because... Everything, as we'll see, is coming to bear for the attack, and we'll see this in the main game. Queen c5 was played, and already black has chosen an ill setup, and now it's going to start going downhill pretty quickly. Knight g3, h6, and here was a slight inaccuracy by white, but it's a very natural move. Knight h5, and it says, okay, I'm going to attack a g pawn. What you going to do about it? I mean, honestly, black should just go g6, where white's got to go, all right, you know, I admit I'm wrong. And that's, that's all it should have been. There should have been a reaction in this position, and black would have been okay after knight h5, at least in the temporary. But what, hap like, what I think should have been played is back to this positional plan by white. First, it's a3, where I'm going to play b4, and I'm going to kick you around. So if a5, okay, I'm just going to get my king off this diagonal, and then I'm going to negotiate my pieces to come back to capture on d4. You don't want my b-pawn. And then, again, we have this type of dream positional setup that you're looking for with white, and I always have g4, f5 as a potential plan. So this, this is what I, I was really looking for for white in the position, but also I'm a positional player for the most part. I don't go head hunting. Knight h5, like I said, reasonable move, but if g6, you just get kicked back. Black castled into it, and we are halfway through the game at this point because black has put himself in a situation where he's going to be attacked for the rest of the game, and this is just not fun. Queenie won followed by queen g3, and look at black's pieces. This is one of those situations to where it's a great example of the three advantages of chess. We got material, time, and quality. Material being, we got extra guys. Well, in this case, black has the extra pawn, and you show this position to a beginner and go, all right, who's winning here? Oh, black's got an extra pawn. But then you start talking about Time. How much time is it going to take for these pieces to be useful? I mean, let's go ahead and highlight all of them. And the quality of these pieces, what are they doing? What is this rook doing? He's doing a great job defending that pawn. What about your bishop? Pawn with a funny hat, good job defending our pieces that aren't attacked. The rook in the corner not doing anything. The knight's really biting on granite here. And then the queen defending our extra pawn. I'm sorry, but everything has gone wrong for black in this position. But we compare on the other side. We've got white with beautiful harmony. Beautiful harmony. And you know what? To boot, we're already threatening mate. So why not? you got to do something about that. And then black is having to dig in the hole. Maybe there was something a bit more accurate than h3 here, but I understand your point. You're just looking to get this other knight around. So, okay, it's a plan. And here, because knight f5 should be a move that's coming up, I kind of like knight takes d4 a bit better with a follow-up idea of f5. And I think it's, it's a little bit cleaner than the main game, but of course, the main game worked out just fine. And here, black must take that opportunity to play g6, followed by queen b4. And black's worse, but it's not, it's not losing. Like, well, it's probably still losing, but it's not busted, busted. It's just busted. It's not busted, busted, you know. <laughs> so queen c5 was played in the game, and this isn't going to do it because your pieces are getting all kicked around. White's got the extra g-pawn 
F pawn duo going on now, and the breakthrough is here, folks. Can't take. And I mean, I feel like we just keep moving the queen and knight back and forth for black. F6 isn't gonna do it. Beautiful move, knight h7. What's your lady doing there on f8? Move again. Takes, takes, and with the checkmate. So, thank you viewer for submitting this nice attacking game. Hopefully I was able to provide some defensive ideas as well as some alternatives for our French players out there because I know we have a bunch as they have come to the channel from my Master of the French Defense course on Chessable. So, I like the games. Keep giving them to me. Submit more and we'll do some more analysis. I, ha I will say I have gotten a ton of games and I'm not analyzing every single game that I get, but games that spark my interest I think will be interesting or have some sort of uh, psychological lesson or whatever lesson I can get into it. Short, quick, in a hurry. Send them in. I'm going to do it. All right. Until next time.